Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum in Simi Valley, California, where we're covering the Reagan National Defense Forum. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS, and we have with us Leanne Carette, who is uh, the CEO of Boeing Defense Space and Security. Leanne, great to see you, and I'm sorry you're a little bit under the weather. Uh, it's all right. It's great to see you as well, Vago. Um, it's been a tremendous day here uh, at the conference. We've, we've talked about everything uh, from, from taxes to national security to to overseas, uh, and then obviously with Pat Shanahan, former uh, Boeing, Mr. Boeing's Mr. Fixit, who is the Deputy Defense Secretary, talking about the importance of reform. Um, I want to start with taxes. Um, you know, it, it, all of the trade associations have supported the tax package that's been moving through the Senate. Obviously, it's got to go to the House to see where we are on that. But how important is that for you as somebody who's running a PNL, a profit and loss enterprise? How important are those tax cuts to a company like Boeing? Well, we're very interested in tax reform, and you know we're pleased at the progress that was made um, through the Senate last night. But again, we'll need to wait for the final bill and see what comes out of that. And as you've heard Dennis Molenberg share, our chairman and CEO for the Boeing Company, uh, you know we view uh, the ability to get the reform and continue to invest as a very good thing. Um, let me take you to the issue of a location. You guys are, you're now a Washington uh, native. How has that move changed and improved the way you're not only networking, but being able to steer the strategy for BDS? What I'm most pleased about is that everything is done on the customer's time zone. You know, uh, we had a, a great business model for a number of years, and we have had great relationships with the customers. But many times uh, when they were available or they had an issue, um, my not being local uh, allowed us to perhaps not have the conversations that we wanted or needed to have. Now I'm there, I'm with them, and I'm operating on their time. And it's, uh, you know, it's, I think it's proved to be very beneficial. One of the things that you're working on has been a culture change within the organization. And we heard from um, so many of the speakers, starting from the first panel, about the importance of reform in getting faster. Secretary Spencer talked about that. Secretary Wilson has talked about that. General Hyten talked about that and drove that message through on the panel that you were on with them uh, about the importance of speed. And yet, some of the big classical defense companies, as, as folks have observed, have sort of monetized the slow process. What are some of the things you guys and you're doing within Boeing to be able to get more agile, to get more flexible, especially as the customer starts to gear up to start doing things more quickly? Well, first we needed to look inward and you know, the first, um um, area of opportunity comes when you identify that there's a problem. And what we recognize is that we had room to be more affordable, we had room to be faster, and we had room to be more innovative. And those three things drove us to do some fundamental things. For instance, the restructuring that we overtook, some consolidation of our sites, the movement of the headquarter, the elimination of a layer of our executive leadership. Really big, hard decisions that are resulting in us being more streamlined, more efficient, and driving decision-making to the right level. You heard it not just from Secretary Wilson, General Hyten this morning, but you heard it from the Deputy Secretary of Defense himself as he talked about we need to be able to rebuild and reform in parallel. And that's something that within industry we're very capable of doing. We need to continue to innovate and accelerate. Uh, we have continued to invest organically in a lot of our capabilities such as avionics um, and analytics and cyber, as well as we've also looked to establishment of some new business models, such as Boeing Horizon X, as well as some recent acquisitions such as Aurora, where we're bring, being able to take what we're doing organically and then um, partner that with some um, outside in perspectives that allows us to move faster and be more innovative. How, how have you guys used uh, mergers and acquisitions on that? You mentioned Aurora. Um, if you look at it, you guys have targeted a lot of extremely innovative companies. In situ was sort of the first one. The second one uh, was Liquid Robotics, another very, very um, innovative company, very, uh, both, you know, very Silicon Valley company. And then you went for Aurora, um, which had fascinating uh, management, uh, which, which is, is now playing a role on your team. Is that one of the mechanisms you're using for the cultural reform of BDS to spur innovation but also change business models? I think it starts again organically. You know, uh, we are a hundred year old company. We have incredible depth and talent um, throughout the organization. And we recognize that we had some opportunities to be even better than we were and we're continuing to build upon that. Um, as you know, as an um, industry, as we've been covered as part of industry, when we've had some opportunities to um, in, um, 
expand our markets and involve new technologies, and those acquisitions proved to be beneficial, uh, we would pursue those. But you need to realize from a Boeing company perspective, we look at organic first. And so we own our culture and we're very proud of our culture. And when you recognize that when we need to move fast, we know how to go make those adjustments, but we're going to leverage all of the tools in our uh, the toolbox. One of the core elements of that um, strategy, though, has been the commercial derivatives model to sort of try to exploit that as, as much as you can. Um, on the tanker side, and I'm going to ask you this because I know it's, it's giving you an ulcer, but I have to ask you this because we talked about it when we were in Paris. Um, th there were those who say that there were some pressures on that model for you, for you guys. Um, for example, on Joint Stars, you know, there was going to be a replacement program, and now that appears to be in question. Something that, uh, you know, it's uh, 707s that now equip that fleet, but you guys have been uh, proposing a 737 uh, derivative for, th for that mission. The P-8 is somewhat of a finite market. There are going to be some more international sales but you guys are working very aggressively to answer the Navy's need to retire the P3s as quickly as possible. Um, and then if you look at it, there's Tanker. Talk to us a little bit about how this model evolves when the airplane that you have, one program looks like it's falling apart, one is still on track, the 767 is going to continue, but on the other one, it's, it's trailing downwards on, on, on the P8 side of the equation. Well, I think you need to, you know, when I look at the market space for commercial derivatives or taking a commercial aircraft and modernizing it um, and converting it for military purposes, the one thing that I think speaks to our strategy, and no one else can do this, we have, through the Boeing Enterprise, a commercial aircraft business and a defense business. And there is nobody else that can do what we do. Uh, if you look at in terms of recapitalizations that are going to occur in future years, you have an entire fleet of 707 aircraft, over a hundred of them that are used for different different purposes, uh, ISR type as one example, that are going to at some point need to be recapitalized or there will be some capability that exists. We're going to continue to stay on top of that, but as long as there is a need uh, for aircraft uh, within the services and around the globe and they need to be outfitted for military purposes, the Boeing company is going to be a leader in that and we're going to continue to learn and grow and deliver the best product uh, for our customers worldwide. Um, uh, you have talked about the tanker. Uh, you and I spoke in Paris. It was supposed to have happened uh, toward the latter part of this year. It looks like it's going to move into next year. Um, give us an update on the program. Is that the last delay on it? Well, it is a complex development program. I think I've been uh, very transparent, as has the company, and our partnership with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, you know, I've sit in, been sitting in this seat now almost uh, two years, and it has continued to be a focus of my uh, days and weeks and months. What I'm most proud about is the uh, the grit and resilience of this team. We are going to deliver an awesome capability. It is a multi-purpose combat tanker. Nothing like this exists in the world today and it's going to be a great franchise. I wish we were delivering an aircraft this year. That had been our focus, our headset, and our approach. We weren't able to make that happen, but we haven't given up, and this team has stayed persistent, and we are right in the middle of it, and we are uh, seeing some positive signs as we close the year and we move into next year, and I look forward to delivering Tanker next year. Um, do you, um, you, uh, you have spent so much time on this and, and studied in granularity, and we talked a little bit about the lessons learned the last time when we spoke in Paris, but are you satisfied after having looked under each seat cushion of this program at this point, that there are no more demons hiding in, in you know, under the floorboards that, that could pop up next year. You know, I've shared with you, Vago, I shared with you um, in a couple of venues that we have not found any new technical issues on this program. Uh, we are uh, really in the midst of productionizing while we are finishing up our flight test and getting our FA certification. I have more than 42 aircraft in build right now. Uh, so as we start delivering uh, the aircraft and we get our FA certifications, get our military certification, these others are going to follow. This is a great franchise that is going to be good for the customer. It's going to be a win-win for Boeing and for its supply base. Is there going to be a retrofit challenge, though, as you're doing this sort of concurrent build and development? I mean, are you going to have to go back to all those, if there's a technical mod or a fix that has to go on, 
then you're going to have to, do you guys have a plan, obviously, to apply that to all the airplanes that are in build? Yeah, and as you know, that is the that is some of the productionization challenge that we've been working through. Having that concurrency between development, flight tests, and being at rate in terms of building the aircraft and incorporating that in, that's part of uh, the challenge that we've been facing with and the risk that we've been dealing with. Um, and so we're living that real time. This is a very uh, smart team. They're a very agile team. We have lessons learned from other programs, well, so we know how to do this, and we're applying those, and we're getting these aircraft ready for delivery. Canada. Um, that was something that was looking very, very good for you, for, for you guys. I understand why on the commercial side of the company, Boeing did file that suit with the Commerce Department. Commerce Department has put tariffs on Bombardier, and since Canada's leadership has said, thank you very much, Boeing, but we're not interested in, in buying your new airplanes. I talked to Harj Sajjan, who's the Canadian Defense Minister, and he was unequivocal about that. And so now they're looking at overseas, Australia, elsewhere, to see whether or not they can you know, buy some gap airplanes as opposed to buying new build uh, jets. But there are others overseas who've said that that concerned them, that the entire episode did. You look at Boeing's business from a defense standpoint worldwide. Do you have any concerns that there's going to be blowback on that in other parts of your, your business? Sort of the perception of, you know, Boeing being a tough guy who comes in there and, and will, will tussle people up on the commercial aerospace side that could then have spillover on the defense side. So I don't look at it through that lens, Vago. This was a Boeing company decision that um, was the right decision to do. Uh, we are all for um, competition, and but if you're going to play uh, uh, in that world, you have to play by the rules, and that is the... Um, issue that we had was that the rules weren't being followed. We have an incredible partnership with the Government of Canada. We have been a partner for decades with them. We have a great capability uh, that they're using that Boeing, the Boeing company has produced. We look forward to standing with them um, through the test of time. We will be there through the end um, and we will let our customers decide what products that they want to buy. Leanne, thanks very much. Hope you have a terrific holiday and look Thank forward you. to working with you next year. Thank you, Vago. Take care. Cheers. Bye.